Hey guys, Claudia here from the Bookkeeping Experts. All right, for some of you, it's almost time, time to file taxes. Some of you already filed taxes, and some of you are still falling behind. <laughs> okay, regardless, I'm here to help you. Uh, we're going to talk about something that happens sometimes, and that is what to do when you purchase personal transactions with your business checking or credit card account. How do you record that? All right, so we're going to talk about that and how uh, how to take care of that at the end of the year, how to clear those transactions, and how to um, account for them. All right, so without much further ado, here we go into QuickBooks Online. Okay, here we have our sample account. And uh, we have um, a few transactions here. We have a rental and books by Betsy. Uh, by the way, how did I get here, Claudia? All right, so on the top right-hand side, click the plus, uh, plus new. For some of you, you don't have this. It's just going to go straight here. And then you want to click on banking. Um, sometimes it says transactions, right? And sometimes your books may look just like this. I'll show it to you. Okay, not a problem. So it's kind of the same thing. The only difference is that's going to be here in bookkeeping. And then transactions. Okay, I don't like to work it like that. Um, this, this is because here you see only one transaction at a time. And it's not very efficient. So uh, especially if you have a lot of work to do. Mm, no, I don't like that. So you can switch back and forth by clicking on the gear menu. And uh, I am on the accounting view. So yeah, plus new. Oops. Um, I'm sorry. The left hand side menu and then banking. And there it is. That's how you get here, right? So we're going to go into banking. And this books by Betsy is a personal transaction. So how do you categorize that? You're going to click on this transaction. And you're going to put books by Betsy. And you're going to choose an equity account that says all owners personal expense. Let's see if we have that. No, we don't have that. Or owners draw. Nope, we don't have that. Or owner's distribution. Nope, we don't have that. So what do we do? We create an account. We can create it from here. We can go all the way to the top, add new. And it's going to be an equity account. So first of all, what is an equity account? An equity account, it's a balance sheet account. And uh, it does not count towards your expenses and your income for the current year. So this is just a way to record your personal expense. And then at the end of the day, you want to transfer, or at the end of the year, I should say, you want to transfer the balance of this account into retained earnings because that's that's kind of how you track, especially if you have a an S-Corp or a C-Corp, you, you'll be able to track all your owner's um owner's distribution so equity and here we are going to select partner distribution or you, and then you can keep it as partner distribution or you can put personal uh personal expense uh but regardless this is going to count towards your distribution right so you set it up here and yeah, we can leave it as, as, as partner distribution or partner draw, whatever you want to call, or, or just owner's draw. If there's no partner, then it's owner's draw. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are going to add this transaction. And like I said, it will go into this new account, which is partner's distribution. All right. So what to do next? At the end of the year, you will have to empty this account zero it out so we're gonna go to accounting uh, see chart of accounts and I, I'm going to pull out that partners distribution and of course there's $55 for most of you there's gonna be a whole lot more than that maybe not okay I'm gonna duplicate my page here been bringing my mouse and click on duplicate 
and I am going to do what we call a journal entry. So we're going to do a plus new, all kinds of transactions sitting on the plus new on the left hand side menu. I'm going to select a journal entry on the left, sorry, the last row. And I'm going to put the date as of uh, December 31st. So let's suppose that this transaction, let's see, when did, did this transaction happen? Uh, happened this year. So uh, basically at the end of this year, I'm going to record this. If it was 2022, it would be the end of 2022. Right? Or, or you can... Uh, you can record right away, but the best thing is that the main important thing about this account is that it's going to track how much money you withdraw from the company, you withdrew from the company. <laughs> and that's what this is for. So here we are going to select that partner distribution. Okay, and keep in mind with a journal entry, there's always two sides of the coin. There's going to be a debit or and a credit so uh, we're going to say that this is being taken out of the partner distribution and being added to retain earnings right how do I do that very simple so if you want to see details about this transaction you can click on it and click on edit oh, and there it is okay that's the one that we just added from banking. Okay. All right. Okay. The X out of here. And I have $55 into that partner distribution. So I, I will go ahead and debit it for $55. And we're going to credit retain earnings. For the same amount okay or whatever amount you withdrew so we're gonna go ahead and save and this should remove the balance from that account okay so it's zero balance and where did the balance go it went into the account called retained earnings so if you run report you will see the journal entry right over here you can click on it and there it is all right <laughs> okay let me go back here all right here we go that is it for today so kind of simple right very simple so that's how you track it and at the end of the year you want to date it as of, you know, December 31st. And you're going to do this journal entry to remove all the partner distribution, zero that account out, and input that into retained earnings. All right? So this way you can track what was all the partner distribution for each of the years. If you don't, if you don't empty it, you're going to have years of history. You still can calculate that, but most likely you have to send it to an Excel spreadsheet and then calculate it from there. But anyhow, so that you can give it to your CPA. But hopefully this was useful to you as you are getting everything ready uh, to close your books for the year. Uh, if you have anything that you'd like us to cover, just put a note down below. Uh, I will talk about more integration. I absolutely love to talk about integration. Why is that? Because I think that nowadays for you to be successful, one, you need to understand your books. You need to understand your finances, I should say. <laughs> you need to understand your finances. You need to understand where your money is coming from and where your money is going to. Um, this way you can plan better, you can start budgeting, see, you know, see your targets for the future. But how can you, how can you set goals if you don't know where you stand right now? So you do need to, you know, that's the most important part. You do need to bring your books up to date so that you can go at any time, any time. And look at your books. And there's so many tools for you to use under reports. You can run reports, 
profit and loss by percentage or just regular profit and loss balance sheet. There's cash flow that can help you track where your money is going to each month. Uh, see the level of cash flow so important, especially for you guys who have a lot of um, um, seasonal business. Like you know, uh, so a lot of my clients have, including our family business that is very seasonal weddings. <laughs> so anyhow, so profit by loss, uh, pro 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 <laughs> profit and loss by percentage of in total income. That's a very useful one. Uh, why is that? Especially, especially for you who wants to understand how you're doing compared to everybody else in the industry, right? So if you run it by percentage, you'll be able to see what's the total percentage of your income, where it's coming from, and what is your bottom line. Very important information too is your cost of goods sold. For a lot of my clients that um, our restaurants and cost of goods are extremely high right now and labor cost is very high as well. So that information is key to know what is your uh, gross re uh, your well, <laughs> your gross profit and then <laughs> your net income at the end of the year. And you, we want to know it by percentage because you know if you're if you're in a service business, uh, you're probably going to be looking at a much higher number as far as the percentage that you're keeping. But if you have something like a restaurant or other business, this percentage is going to be, if you're, if you're making about 15%, you're doing pretty good. Uh, but, you know, for other industries, if you're only keep, keeping uh, uh, 15%, you're not doing good at all. You're looking more into you know, 70% or, or more. So it depends on the industry. It depends on what you do. But you do need to understand, especially because you'll be able to take a look at some of the expenses that are affecting your bottom line, right? So if you're looking at your expenses here and you realize that, um, I don't know, uh, one expense is like, like I said, this year, labor cost is very high. Um, and so is your cost of goods sold. But another one that went pretty high, especially uh, for some of you, is um, your your auto uh, insurance. Auto insurance for some of my clients went up pretty high, and uh, you want to keep track of that. You want to make sure that that expense is not eating all your revenue. For for one of my clients that was eating pretty much all his revenue just so you want to keep an eye on that and keep track of where your money is going to and by doing that you'll be able to plan ahead and be able to address those issues uh, or even prevent right taking taking actions preventive actions which is even better because you're going to be ahead of your game instead of just trying to um, react to what's coming uh, what's coming towards you all right, so once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch me today <laughs> and get some education here on QuickBooks Online. Okay, so I hope that you will give us a thumbs up to this video. Share it with your friends, with your family, coworkers, everybody. Just share it with everybody and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date what's going on with QuickBooks Online and how to use, um, use QuickBooks Online to run your business efficiently and know how to stay ahead of your game. All right, so we'll see you next week. And until next time, keep on smiling.